Hey everybody! So today I want to continue the theme that we've been on, on spiritual warfare. And this time we're going to look at the Absalom spirit. Now the man Absalom was the son of David. He was actually the best looking man in all of Israel. And his mother's name was Mecca. Now Absalom had a sister, Tamer, who was raped by their half-brother, Amnon. David's eldest son. Rather than discipline Amnon, David did not react, even though the Mosaic law said that such a disobedient son should be put to death. Absalom looked after his sister for two years. However, on the inside, he just let his offence and grudges stew, until eventually he orchestrated Amnon's murder. Then he fled Eventually he came back, and David refused to look at him. That said, eventually, David showed him grace, took him back and embraced him. But there was still no discipline regarding the evil that his children had gotten up to. Absalom abused the peaceful reception that he gotten, and instead decided to steal away the hearts of the men of Israel. If someone had a problem, who are you going to call? Absalom. And he used this persuasion to get political leverage over his father, and eventually to oust David from the kingdom. Absalom set up his own little Antichrist-type monarchy in the land of Israel, until eventually David's forces launched a counterattack. Absalom's long, beautiful hair, the same hair for which he had been so famously renowned, got caught in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> which is just the most horrible way to die. And then David's men came and poked him with spears until he finally croaked, at which point they buried him under heavy boulders. Now when I mention the Absalom spirit, do not for one second think that I'm suggesting that the dead Absalom has come back to life in some paranormal way. That said, the evil kings and queens of the Old Testament do teach us a lot about the powers and principalities and despots that afflict the world today. The Absalom spirit is a particularly nasty one. It's a demonic spirit that takes on the qualities or the characteristics or the behaviour of the physical Absalom that we read about in 2 Samuel. It is a spirit that often masquerades as a friend before finally attempting a church or business overthrow. God first introduced me to this evil spirit about four years ago. I just begun dreaming when all of a sudden I began seeing wolves all over the place jumping up and pouncing at me. And I really felt Jesus strongly say, beware of the wolves in sheep's clothing. They're coming as your friends, they're coming from places where you should be able to trust your fellow man. However, there is nothing substantial to them. They are wicked through and through. Destruction and overthrow are their mantras. It didn't take long before God showed me exactly who it was that the spirit was operating through. This particular brother in Christ at the time began doing the following things. Harassing leaders on social media. Abusing the word of God to meet his own biblically illiterate dogmas. He was inherently deceptive. He spent months requesting one-on-one -on -one Bible studies from church members so he could grow in the faith, only to later drop the mask and reveal that he just wanted to teach other people why they were wrong and his errant beliefs were correct. He liked to hog the floor under a guise of false humility. He threatened to murder members of the congregation and actually tried to murder someone. And this is what the Absalom spirit does. It seeks out men in the church who are ambitious, who have their eye on the microphone, or the lead guitar. And when this evil spirit's lust for power is not realized by those in the immediate vicinity of the individual that they are corrupting, they might cast witchy curses in the background. And if they actually get what they want, it can lead to an entire fellowship falling under false doctrine, or even church doors closing. The worst case scenario? People are physically injured. 
Now, some of you might think this sounds very similar to the Jezebel spirit. What the Jezebel spirit is to women, the Absalom spirit is to men. I'm about to share with you some key indicators to help you identify the Absalom spirit in your world. When you have the knowledge, and people perish for lack of knowledge, it prepares you better to identify this evil spirit, an assassin from the enemy, should the enemy indeed assign him against you. So number one. Absalom was the son of King David and his wife Mecca, princess of Geshur, a small kingdom whose inhabitants worshipped the moon god in the form of a bull. After Absalom killed Amnon, he ran back to his grandfather's house, a place of occult practices. Furthermore, note the relationship between the word magic, pharmakia, meaning to administer drugs, and pharmaceuticals. So those who dabble with drugs or have drug addictions are again more susceptible to demonic influence. Hosts of the Absalom spirit are also liars. <laughs> because the Absalom spirit itself is inherently dishonest. Consider how Absalom spoke to Amnon and said, Hey bruh, I'm gonna throw a party, you should totally come bro. And what did he do with this party? Uh, he killed him. Subtlety and an air removal are tools which enable the schemer to keep on plotting until they expose their endgame. Carriers of an Absalom spirit oftentimes will employ a hands-off approach and get their supporters, or less strong-willed counterparts, to carry out their evil agendas for them. To keep their talons from getting dirty, Absalom inspirited hosts send out gossips and slanderers to subtly derail the authority that God has already established. This will often manifest itself in very destructive ways. Think of how the actual Absalom organised the burning of Joab's property. Carriers of an Absalom spirit oftentimes have not been in God's presence for very long. And to have an inherent drive to flee when their evil deeds have been exposed. Absaloms are master schemers and orchestrators. And the people in the world are merely chess pieces to be moved around at the puppet master's will. And the people that they get to work for them are often weak-willed or in search of affirmation and approval. Absaloms do not reconcile with those that they have offended or dishonoured. But rather they play with vulnerable people while they themselves plot in the background. The hosts that the enemy wants to use to attack the people of God usually struggle with vanity. Absaloms have no problem destroying the competition or anyone who gets in their way. Carriers of Absalom spirits are threatening, intimidating, and always willing to strike, which is what makes them so deadly. Carriers of an Absalom spirit have no respect for or true understanding of godly authority. Yet still, they want the position that comes with that authority, seeing it as a necessary step in their own self-elevation. Hosts of this spirit often self-promote and try to empire build in someone else's kingdom, fellowship, or sphere of influence. The good-looking Absalom masqueraded as a miniature king of Israel during David's reign with boisterous pomp, splashy splendor, showy chariots, and an enthusiastic entourage. But rather than actually ever help anyone, all he did was point out the apparent inefficiency and purportedly weak structure of the existing establishment. Then, having created a great sense of weariness, consternation, distrust in the authority that already exists, he set himself up as a solution to the problems of his own creation, whether those problems had been real or imaginary to begin with. Another thing they do is poach disciples and recruits with words of wisdom, empty promises, and false gestures of hope, friendship, concern, and help. Far from being easily identified and openly rebuked, Absalom spirits are masters of manipulating those who are supposed to be strong in their faith and who should know better. The prophet Ahitophel's support of Absalom made Absalom's usurpation seem more legitimate and undoubtedly caused many of the undecided or confused Israelites to align with the new order. Carriers of the spirit surround themselves with powerful, influential, and seemingly authoritative voices that will affirm them personally and in front of others. 
These echoers are usually of weak moral character and lack wisdom. The second time I encountered this spirit, I'd actually made um, a couple of prophetic friends. And we'd agreed to meet together, have some dinner, have some chats. But God gave me a dream just before we went to meet up. And in that dream, there was a dead goat on a silver platter on the kitchen table. And I could smell it. Even in the dream, I could still get a whiff of the sin and the filth and the contamination. So if ever anyone tells you that sin has a smell, <laughs> it does. We met up anyway, but I was on guard for anything suspicious. And as we sat together, the conversations really took off for the first 90 minutes or so. It was wonderful. Then I went to the bathroom and I came back. And suddenly there was an attempt to exile me, to push me to one side, to the peripheries of a conversation. And rather than sit there getting angry or offended, I opened my ears and I listened. And all the conversations were anti-authority. It was suggested that God had called one particular pastor friend of mine's sermon sacrilege, and that God was going to expand his church here in Ireland. But before he would do that, he would oust all of those that he had in authority. At one point, it seemed like anyone who had a position <laughs> in the church was suddenly getting shot at with accusations and missiles, fiery darts, from this person. And at the root of the conversation was offence, and a sense that those with a prophetic gift should elevate above and beyond everyone else. Rather than being one body with multiple parts, all different, working together, for a common cause of building the body of Christ to prepare the way for the church and the world before the rapture of Jesus Christ. No, the attempt was all about elevating and promoting oneself and one's gift over everyone else's. About a week later, when I was still torn, you know, God, is the friendship really over? Should I, should I continue it and just hope for the best? Someone came up to me and said, God says that you've got a lot of potential but he knows who you're hanging out with. And God's word is, that friend will destroy you. End it now. God didn't have to tell me twice. That was all I needed to know. So when I next saw that person, I took them to one side. I shared my heart. I shared what God had told me. And I said, we can't be friends. I can't be around you. You've got offenses. You've got problems. And you have to deal with them. But roping people in, just so you have a gossip, and have a moan, and backbite, that's not God's way. And that is how you deal with an Absalom spirit. With Leviathan, you get your soul healed. Because in and of yourself, you can't beat it. With the spirit of Legion, you get your soul healed, and then you rebuke it. With a Jezebel, you get your soul healed, and then you either rebuke it, or ideally the patriarch, or the leader, of that church or business or family will get their act together and use the authority that God has given them. Well, in Absalom spirit, it has to be dealt with head on. Because Absalom turned toxic in the Bible when he got away with heinous evil without being disciplined, without being called out. So this, oh, we're Christians, we're super nice and we don't want to offend anyone. If you get in an argument, you've already lost. Crap. No, it's got no place when you're encountering an Absalom spirit. It's a spirit that will try to destroy you, oust you, exile you, or literally even kill you. It has to be confronted head on with the authority that you have in Jesus Christ. So thank you for listening. I hope this blesses you. I pray that God will open your eyes to see any Absalom spirits that may be in your world or that the enemy will send to your world in the days, weeks, months, or years to come, and that you will be brave, be courageous, not fall under its spell, not fall under its deception, not become one of its disciples, but that you'll actually get that spiritual smell, you'll get a whiff or a scent, even in, in, in the physical, that it will manifest in physical ways, that you will know that there is an Absalom spirit nearby, it wants to destroy you, or those who are around or over you, that you will not bow the knee to it.
but you'll be brave, you'll be holy. If you need to end up leaving that church or, or business because other people tolerate it, that you will. But that ideally, you'll pick up the sword of the spirit that divides fact from fiction. The thoughts and tensions of the heart, bone and marrow, and that you will cut down that evil spirit in its tracks. And that the man who is being abused and used and oppressed with this evil spirit will be reconciled to God and to the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have the best day. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.